Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos, and today in this episode we're going to go ahead and, well, update the Polar Trans vehicle because of the updates in point 22 has, in a sense, in a sense, broken the save, or broken the vehicle in, for the, for, uh, you know, for the Polar Trek. Uh, let's see, okay, these have been replaced, obviously, the older landing, landing gears that I used as doors, they don't fit anymore, sadly, so I went ahead and replaced those, uh, the solar dish used to be a smaller solar dish for point 21, now it's a large, very beautiful solar dish satellite dish, excuse me, for point 22. Unfortunately, it was so big that I had to move it around and prop it up a little bit because it interferes with the structure. Uh, also, because we have new science stuff, we're going to go ahead and put some science stuff on this vehicle, such as the, uh, the goo machine. And I put one in here as well. Uh, just to pretend it's like some sort of cryostasis sample gathering refrigeration unit or something of that nature. Also some updates on the interior. It's like a little circuit board or uh, something of that nature. Put some more screens everywhere, try to fill up the uh, walls a little bit there. Whoops. Yep, oh, there we go. Made the uh, captain's view screen better bigger better and uh, let's see put some struts on the very top to go across the ceiling give it a little bit more structure and uh, stability and uh, the bridge is actually smaller I move these walls further up this right here has really no this uh, RCS fuel tank has really no purpose other than to balance the weight as I'll show you in a second but I'm always pretending that it could be some sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, water tank or something of that nature. Like a water heater tank. Now you might be wondering yourself, why are all these ladders out here? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not quite over the cold yet. It, uh, it's still getting to me. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um... These ladders, uh, one of uh, my subscribers gave me a really great idea to use the ladders as fold-out beds. And I thought that was really cool. And uh, darn it, I forgot his name. I'll have to go back and look at it, but I'll post it. Um, so yeah, these are fold-out beds. Really nice. Good idea. Of course, the table, I had to move it back a little bit. And let's see, what else we got here? Of course the new science doohickey and what I'm doing is I'm pretending that this is like the core computer server whatever th that they use to hook up with with uh, the command center and uh, transmit research and data and you know talk to their husbands and wives and children and whatever and of course we have the command module itself which acts as a well pretending to be um, slash storage container slash uh, restroom with shower and uh, <clears throat> all that other good stuff. And of course on top of this <clears throat> goodness gracious hold on a second. Okay. Had to get that out of there. And uh, let's see what was I going to say. Okay. Here's another new scientific uh, radar dish kind of thing. So I uh, put it out on top of there and uh, pretending that it's some sort of uh, uplink to Command Central or whatnot. And so on and so forth. Okay, so 
there it is brand new interior updates upgrades and we need to fly this out to the crew that's already there and also a big giant solar panel just to make it a little bit more scientific we can pretend the solar panel is some sort of uh, measuring radiation x-ray whatever device so let's go ahead and get started we'll make sure nobody's in there first we don't want stowaways bill get out of there and save and launch all right everything's ready to go looks good so let's get this party started spacebar and turn off those back engines and then here we go Come on. I'm doing it nice and slowly. A little bit more power. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and swerve a little bit. I believe we are right here with the polar track. And activating rear engines. Full power. Well, I almost screwed that pooch. Okay, note to self, do not use time warp. I'm just gonna do this the old-fashioned way. No, that wasn't too hard. Normally, I would have just uh, normally I would have just ejected the engines and parachuted down, but I was a little curious to see if I could actually land the stupid thing. All right. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and release the engines and hopefully drive away. It looks like we have a pop tire back here. Okay, two pop tires came down a little hard on the back. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And hopefully uh, this works and doesn't trap me. That'd be my biggest fear. Uh, just in case it does, let's go ahead and quick save. There we go. And uh, breaks off. 
Oh, yeah, those tires are not looking too good. All right, and release. Ah, <laughs> yay! You did your job well. Well done. Now I will leave you. All right, these tires. I do not like these tires. Broken tires or flat tires have this really bad habit of wiggling really hard and then popping off. So I'm just going to drive up here nice and slow. Now if you notice, the trees are gone. I wonder if that's just a load error, loading, er loading error. Blech. But I'm going to load this sucker up again. And uh, hopefully the trees will come back. As you can see here, it's sped up to about 300%, and I'm just pretty much pointing out uh, what's going on with the door right there. You can see the landing gears all messed up. So I went ahead and switched, switched it with new landing gears and of course updates, and it opens up real nicely. And uh, see, what else do I show you here? Okay, open up the, the satellite dish, and then the other transmitter, and of course the solar panel. And it's not like it actually needs power, it's just, you know, I thought it would be kind of cool to kind of like uh, setting up a laboratory or something of that nature. All these little instruments come out. Uh, here's Jebediah, and of course he falls flat on his ass and he doesn't get back up, but that's okay because I'm going to go ahead and put all the crew into the new uh, vehicle, put the name on it, which I believe was the Polar Challenger Explorer. And yeah, go ahead and recover the rest of the stuff, reload it so the trees come back, and we'll start from there. Now, if you can remember, when I first started these videos, my goal was to create a SSTO that could carry 100 tons into orbit. And of course, the first prototype came out and it, it got into orbit, but it failed with the uh, requirements of 100 tons. And then the X2 came out and unfortunately I couldn't get the darn thing up high enough without it losing control. And you saw a little bit of the X3 before I went ahead and pretty much put the research on halt due to the fact that my designs had run into a roadblock. However, there have been rumors of an X4 Hyperstar secretly under construction. Take a look.